In this lesson, we're going to talk about managing your services. The services which we've just installed occasionally need a bit of management. That is, you'll need to tell them to start or restart or reload their configuration files or, God forbid, stop. You'll also want to enable or disable them at boot time, which is not related to starting or stopping them in the moment. And the way we do that is through systemd. Now, systemd is the modern init system. You'll need to learn how to use it regardless of where you go or really which types of Linux systems you work with. Some distributions are still in the process of migrating to systemd. So I'll show you the systemd commands, which are sort of the future. And just in case you find yourself on a system that does not have systemd commands available, that is the systemctl command and the journalctl command, I'll show you how to use the older init system syntax, which is usually wrapped in a service command. So you can say service. You can see that these are roughly equivalent to the ones here. These are the new ones we'll be learning. But you sort of need both in your toolbox. OK, so systemctl is the command which systemd gives us to manage our services. And journalctl is useful as well, although we'll be covering it less thoroughly. And that's to manage and parse your logs, the application logs, system logs, etc. So here's a few sample systemctl commands. So here we're just saying, the first one is, please get us the status of the MySQL service. Let's see what that looks like in real life. This gives us back a bit of information about the service. Most importantly, the fact that it's running and how long it's been running. It shows us process information, and it shows us the last few lines of the log file for this service. So it's a, it's a fair chunk of information there, and it can often help you very quickly troubleshoot things. On the right here, I've got a terminal that is running a non-systemd version of Ubuntu, that is uh, the really old long-term support version. Just to prove this, we're gonna, you're going to see systemctl command not found. So instead, we'll use that service command I mentioned. Service, and then the service name, status. You see, you get a bit less information here. So things like stop, reload are all going to be the same. I just wanted you to see the, this alternate syntax, which you'll see on many older systems or even some Unix systems. Let's go ahead and start the services which we need. I'm going to close this window here because we don't need to deal with the old right now while we're learning the new. So we're going to go ahead and start all of these services. That's done with the start command. So systemctl start and then one or more services you'd like to start. And you can see Nginx is now running. I could do this for the others as well. Now there's a difference between starting a service with the start argument, and enabling a service, which is what you do to ensure that something is actually started at boot time. So you've got start and stop, which starts or stops a service right now. And then you've got enable and disable, which enables something at boot or disables it at boot. That is, ensures that it's started at boot or ensures that it is not started at boot. For our WordPress stack, we want to make sure that the following are enabled. So the command is systemctl enable MySQL, our database, Nginx, our web server, PHP FPM, which is how the web server is going to talk to our programming language interpreter, and Monit, which will be our monitoring program. All these things have now been enabled, which means that should something happen, should your server go down, should you need to reboot, these things will come back up automatically. Just to give you a theoretical overview of the most common systemctl commands which you'll be using, you've got the format here, systemctl, then command, and then your service or unit. Systemd calls these units. You can pass it enable, so systemctl enable, some service, some unit name, disable, start, stop, reload, which is a very useful one, which means you'll reread your program configuration files without actually killing the process. Restart is a hard restart of the process. For In terms of things like web servers, this means the web server would go down while people are still connected to it. With a reload, it's a much nicer way of doing that because you're not actually terminating anybody's connection. And what you just saw, status. Status, start, enable. These are the most common ones. Here are a few common journal CTL 
commands, that is log management commands. The second one in particular is one you'll be using a lot to get log entries from a specific service. So you'll say journalctl-u and then the service name, the unit name, which you want information on. There are a few others here, try them out. They are for following the system log, checking your boot log, or, and I think this is really nice, you can pass a since argument and a few others which take these sort of time strings, such as 10 minutes ago, 